first topic of theory of computations that is finite automata so let's start with it we normally come across the term finite automata what does automata means automata means a machine and finite automata consists of five tuples first is q q is a finite set of states then comes sigma a finite set of input alphabets then comes delta a transition function q not the initial or start state and f the final or accepting state please remember we have one start state q not and we can have a set of final states that means there can be one or more than one final states we will discuss about every entity separately first comes q a finite set of states what are the important characteristics of q every automata has a defined set of states that is total number of states in the automata along with their names in the automata given below we have four states q0 q1 q2 and qf hence capital q is q0 q1 q2 and q4 number of states can vary from 0 to n start state and final state are part of q0 next comes sigma a finite set of input alphabets symbol sigma followed by symbols in parentheses indicate the number of inputs which will be considered to draw an automata if we have sigma ab that means all strings considered in the automata will have combination of only two alphabets a and b if i have sigma 0 1 that means all strings will have combination of only two numeric symbols 0 and 1 now if i talk about english language my sigma is a to z all the strings considered will have a combination of 26 alphabets and since every word of english language is combination of one among these 26 we can say that sigma of a to z represent entire english language if we have sigma of 0 to 9 that means that all string considered in the automata will be a combination of numeric only now we come to the next symbol which is used in the finite automata that is delta the important characteristics of this are transition function represents the movements of an input from one state to another they can always be represented through table this is a transition table in this table we are considering three states since in our finite automata we have three states q0 q1 and qf qf indicates the final state q0 indicates the start state sigma is ab so we have written ab in the columns if we have sigma of q0 comma a is q1 this means that on consuming a from q0 the machine will move to state q1 so this is how we represent the transition function if we have q1 on b is qf this is how we represent it in the transition state next we come to q0 the start or initial state q0 is the start state from which the first transition of the machine will take place it is part of set capital q in the automata given below q0 is the start state start state can have transition to any states in the set including itself start state is normally represented by q0 or 0 and the symbol used to represent the start state is a straight arrow next we come to f the set of final or accepting states qf is the final state where the machine ends it is part of the set q the final state can have transition to any state in the set including itself final state is normally represented by qf as you can see in the transition diagram below also the symbol used to represent the final state is double circle that is circle within a circle and uh, finite automata can have one or more final states in the transition table final state is represented by ast now we have covered all the five tuples of the finite automata we need to cover some other important points also so first comes the phi state what is a phi state it is normally assumed that a finite automata will start from start state consume some input and go to the final state in case there is no transition from a particular state on some specific input the automata moves to crash state or this crash state is called phi state this state indicates that the machine has stopped in between without reaching the final state just consider q2 on b in the automata given on the left side we don't have any transition from q2 on b so we say that it will move to crash state likewise we don't have any transition from qf on a so we say that it is moving to the crash state 
crash state is normally represented by a independent state with the symbol phi corresponding to q2 on b we move to phi corresponding to qf on a we move to phi now just take an example if we want to have a input transition of a b b on the given automata the transition sequence will be q0 to a since first symbol was a q1 to b we move to q2 and then we come to third b now we move to crash state that means this particular input will not be accepted by the machine next there is another important point which needs to be considered that is epsilon move epsilon move signifies that we can go from one state to another without consuming any input that is change in the state with no input consumption just see no a no b has been utilized but we have moved from state q0 to q1 likewise we can move from state q1 to qf without consuming any when we talk about automata we say that there are two type of automata one is deterministic and another is non deterministic finite automata represented by dfa and nfa what is a dfa dfa is a machine where corresponding to every input of sigma there can be only one input from every state. in this case from q0 on a it goes to q1 from q0 on b it goes to q2 likewise from q1 on a it moves to qf and on b self loop to q1 itself q2 has two moves one on a to qf another on b to q1 and qf has two moves one on a another on b and both are self loop to qf itself so this is a deterministic machine just see corresponding to every input sigma sigma being a b we have exactly one output if we talk about nfa it is a machine where corresponding to single input of sigma there can be more than one output from a particular state just see this on q0 we have two moves corresponding to a 1 to q1 another to q2 likewise on q2 we have two moves on b one self loop on q2 itself and another on qf so this is a non deterministic finite automata now non deterministic finite automata can further be divided into two types one is nfa with epsilon another is nfa without epsilon in nfa with epsilon we have a epsilon move along with one or more moves from a given input now see this q1 on q1 to a on q0 and q1 to a on q1 and there is a epsilon move also from q1 to qf so this is a nfa with epsilon now the difference between nfa and dfa dfa is a machine where corresponding to every input there is only one output from every state whereas in nfa we can have more than one outputs from a particular state please remember most important point dfa will not have any epsilon move whereas nfa can have epsilon we have discussed major components of finite automata in detail nfa and dfa has been introduced and difference between them have been provided in the coming slides we will discuss about regular languages which are used to design the automata thanks for watching